Have you ever been in a situation where you feel like you haven't been listened to? I remember a time when I was in school here. I was in maths class, sitting there, listening to the teacher write the mathematical equation on the board, when all of a sudden my fellow pupils, let's say, decided they were gonna set off a fart machine, sounded like this, behind me. Now, at first, this was hysterical, but obviously the teacher needed to know who it was so that the right punishment could be distributed. As I turned round looking at the whole situation, I noticed that everyone was pointing at me. Now, I was pleading with my innocence, with the teacher shaking my head, going, no, 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 no. But he sent me outside of the door to stand there and report, and report back to him at lunchtime. Now, obviously, this wasn't right. It was I was innocent, but in this case, who was wrong? Was it the teacher? Was it the people who set it off? Both were wrong, but in different ways. In what ways were they different? Well, those who set off the fart machine were wrong because they were the ones who set it off. That one's obvious. They were the guilty ones. They were wrong for lying by pointing at me and placing the blame at my door. But also the teacher is wrong because he was fed lies by those pointing the finger. He didn't listen to my side of the story. In his frustration and need to control the class, they, he listened to the loudest voice and voices. He punished me unfairly. Have you ever been in a situation like this? These sorts of situations don't only happen in school, they can happen between you and your friends. They can happen between you, your brother and your sister. They can even happen between you and your parents. I think it would be fair to say we have all been in situations where we haven't been listened to and unfairly treated, but if we were really, really honest with ourselves, we have also been in, the, in those situations, uh, we've been those people who have pointed the finger to protect ourselves at other people. We have also been like the teacher, taking sides, reacting before listening, not taking the time to step back and look at the whole picture and hear both sides of the story to get the truth before making the judgment. There might also be situations where you find yourself in the middle of two friends, family members in an argument, but knowing them well enough, you can almost tell who is telling the truth without even hearing a word because of the kind of person you know them to be. You know their character, you know their attitude, you know, you know their past actions and what they value. Now, there, there's a story in the Bible which I believe illustrates this pretty well. But in the end, despite a person knowing the truth, they chose to turn their back on it, turn their back on the truth and go with the finger pointers. Very early in the morning, the leading priests, the Jewish elders, the teachers of the law and all the Jewish council decided what to do with Jesus. They tied him, led him away and turned him over to Pilate, the governor. Pilate asked Jesus, are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus answered, yes, I am. The leading priests accused Jesus of many things. So Pilate asked Jesus another question. He said, you can see that these people are accusing you of many things, but why don't you answer? But Jesus still said nothing. Pilate was very surprised at this. Every year at the Passover time, Pilate would free one person from prison. He would free any person the people wanted him to free. At that time, there was a man named Barabbas in prison. He was a rebel and had committed murder during a riot. The crowd came to Pilate and asked him to free a prisoner as he always did. Pilate asked them, do you want me to free the king of the Jews? Because Pilate knew that 
the leading priests had given Jesus to him because they were jealous of Jesus. And the leading priests had persuaded the people to ask Pilate to free Barabbas, not Jesus. Pilate asked the crowd again, so what should I do with this man you call the king of the Jews? And they shouted, kill him on a cross. Pilate asked, why? What wrong has he done? But they shouted louder and louder, kill him on a cross. Pilate wanted to please the crowd, so he freed Barabbas for them. And Pilate told the soldiers to beat Jesus with whips. Then he gave Jesus to the soldiers to be killed on a cross. Before this event, Jesus was going around teaching people about God and his love for them. Teaching that God has a plan and a purpose for them. Healing the sick, the blind and the disabled. He even rose a couple of people from the dead. Now the leading priests didn't like this because it challenged their authority, their leadership. So they arrested him and accused him of things he had never done and said and made up lies about him so that they could get rid of him. So I have a question. Who were the finger pointers in the classroom in this story? Who were the teachers in this story? Who was innocent in this story? I don't know about you, but what was surprising to me was that Pilate, the man who had the power to put Jesus in jail or sentence Jesus to death, found no guilt in Jesus. The claims of the leading priests and the crowd pointing their fingers didn't line up with what Pilate witnessed while questioning Jesus. Pilate made an effort to find the truth. However, even though he knew the truth, he went along with the crowd to satisfy them because if he didn't go with them and what they wanted, he was afraid that he would not be liked and they would riot and cause problems for him. Now that isn't to say he didn't try to find a way out by offering someone else in Jesus' place, but the people and the leading priests chose a known murderer over an innocent man to be freed. And to add insult to injury, imprisonment wasn't enough. The leading priests and the crowd called for Jesus to be crucified, killed on a cross. Now this was the most painful and humiliating way to die. Pilate buckled in the pressure from the crowd. He gave in, he chose to please the crowd over justice and truth. Is that right? Does that sound fair? It's important to seek the truth. What is right? We will throughout our lives find ourselves in situations like the teacher and pilot. And in that situation, we have a choice to look for the truth or not look for the truth. That means listening to both sides of the story and weighing up the accounts, even if it is uncomfortable or not what we want to hear. And sometimes the truth is something we can just see through our experience of knowing someone. What is surprising is that Pilate had only just met Jesus. And for that short time of questioning, he almost instantly could tell Jesus was innocent and was telling the truth, despite Jesus hardly saying a word. There might be someone in your life, a friend, sister, brother, or even a parent in which you haven't got their side of the story in a particular situation yet. You might be desperate for the truth because the situation is so confusing and painful and all you want to do is understand and make sense of it. One side might be pointing to the other, you know, finger pointing. One side might be blaming the other side, but the other side is frustratingly silent. 
But just because one person is pointing the finger and blaming the other, doesn't mean their side of the story is entirely true. If one side is not giving you their side of the story, it could be because they are trying to protect you. Because of your age, they might be protecting you from all the messiness and complexity which could cause more confusion and pain for you if they did share. But one day, when you're older, and when the time is right, the truth will be shared. But in the meantime, it is in these kinds of situations that I urge you and encourage you, even though it's confusing and painful, to try to be patient. Don't start pointing the finger. Step back and take in a breath. Focus on the whole picture right now and that person. Reflect on how they love you and care for you. Don't forget they might be in pain too. Don't be like Pilate and buckle to the crowd, the pressure of the cloud or the loudest voice. Don't be like the teacher, but seek both sides of the story. This can be applied to many things, even Jesus himself, because we've seen it in the story. So have we, or do we look at what Jesus says about himself? Do we consider it a lie? When you look at Jesus, do you look at what the Bible says about him and what Jesus says about himself as truth? Or do you listen to your friends who says he was a liar? Have you stepped back for yourself and taken the time to look at the whole picture of who Jesus was and is?